Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next section in microeconomics, we're now going to talk about supply. So we're moving on from demand, which we covered in the previous section. Now we're going to look at the other side, which is supply. And let's start off with the definition. So supply is basically the quantity of a good or service that a producer is willing to produce at a given price. So notice the difference in the definitions between demand and supply. Demand was from the consumer's perspective, while supply is from the producer's perspective or from the producer's point of view. So I'm just going to make a note of that. Supply, we're looking at everything from a producer's point of view. So let's say that you're a producer, you're making a product, you're selling it in the market, and right now your product is selling for $100 in the market, and you're producing some kind of quantity of it. Well, let's say that there's a change in the market, and fortunately, the demand for your product increases. It goes up, and so let's say now that you can sell the product for $150. Well, what's going to happen to the quantity that you're producing if the price of the product goes from 100 to 150? You're going to have more incentive to produce more of the product. So let's say that here you're producing 1,000 units. If the price goes up to 150, that's going to give you motivation, incentive to produce more. Maybe you'll up that quantity to 1,500. Because remember, as a producer, you're trying to maximize profit. So if you could sell a product for more and increase the quantity, that's going to increase your profit. So from that simple example, let's introduce a concept called the law of supply. And basically the law of supply in general states that if the price of a good or service increases, then the producer is going to be more motivated, going to have more incentive to produce more. So the quantity supplied is going to increase as well. Versus if the price of a good or service decreases in the market, the producer is not going to have as much incentive to produce, so the quantity supplied is going to decrease. And we can show this visually, like we did with uh, demand, except now we'll have the price of the good or service, and then over here we'll have the quantity supplied. So notice that the law of supply is kind of the opposite of the law of demand. Because when the price of a good or service increase, then the demand decrease. The consumer, from the consumer's point of view, they weren't willing to buy as much if the price increases versus if the price decrease, then that quantity demanded increase. But with supply, it's the opposite. Price of a good or service increases, then the quantity supplied is going to increase as well. And if it decreases, quantity supplied is going to decrease. So we can represent this with a curve that looks like that. So this here is called the supply curve. Now, as I mentioned with demand, this law here isn't always going to hold for all situations, for all goods and services. A good example of that actually is Walmart. So in Sam Walton's autobiography called Made in America, which is an amazing book, by the way, I highly recommend you read it, basically talks about, he talks about in his own words, how he grew Walmart from a single store to the biggest company in the world at one point, and he was the richest guy in the world at one point. It's an amazing read. But anyway, in that book, what he mentions that at the beginning, if we got price and quantity supplied, what he started doing was he started discounting items that he was selling in his stores. So he would discount the items and then he noticed that the volume that he was able to sell, the increased volume, overall increased his profit. And so what he did was he lowered the price and supplied more of the product. So Walmart's curve, supply curve, initially could have maybe even been the opposite of this, right? So that's just an example of where it's not always, this law of supply is not always going to be set in stone, but for the sake of this video, let's, uh, let's just pretend it is. And for most goods and services in the market, this will hold. If the price of a good or service increases, the producer is willing to produce more. If it decreases, then the producer is willing to produce 
less. Now, as I mentioned with the demand curve, the supply curve, it can also be looked at different scales. So we can be looking at this supply curve from let's say one producer. So let's, uh, let's put a scale here on the X axis. So let's say at this price, let's say it's like $5 versus here, let's say it's $10. So let's say at a price of $5, a single producer, we're looking at a single producer supply curve, they're going to supply 100 units of the product. At a price of $10, they're willing to supply 200. So that could be from a single producer's perspective, or you can maybe look at the entire market, an entire market, so all of the producers combined in a single market. So this could be like 100K, for example, and this would be 200K. 100,000 and 200,000. So you could look at it on different scales, either looking at it for a single producer or a group of producers in a market. And that would change that quantity supplied axis. It would have different scales. Now, what we're going to cover in the next couple of videos is talking about how supply can be affected. And the way it could be affected, we actually split it up into two cases, just like we did with demand. So there could be a change in quantity supplied, which we're going to talk about in a single video. This is going to be a whole video on its own. And there could also be a change in the overall supply. So both of these are different. They're going to be separate videos. So the wording is almost similar, change in quantity supply, change in supply, but they are different. Right? So just be careful with the wording when you're reading this in your textbook, when you're listening to your prof, or when you see it on the midterm or exam. So change in quantity supplied, this is basically movement along the curve. And we're just going to be looking at single points on the curve and how we go from one point to the next. So if we draw this curve here, we got quantity supplied, we got price, okay? Quantity supplied is basically going from this point to this point here, or from this point to this point, or we could be going down the curve the other way as well. Okay, so change in quantity supplied, it's only gonna be affected by one factor. What's that factor going to be? It's going to be price. Okay, and this movement along the curve is basically explained with law of supply. So as we increase the price, the quantity supplied increases. As we decrease the price, the quantity supplied is going to decrease. So we talked about that already, but in this video, we're going to jump into deeper reasons of why this is happening from a producer's point of view. There's going to be deeper reasons, and it's going to do with the fact that producers want to maximize profit, but they also have limited resources. And we're also going to talk about why it's a curve, why it's not linear. It's going to be kind of a complex explanation, but I'm going to do my best. So that's going to be change in quantity supply, just the overview before we get into that video. And then change in supply is basically going to be a shift of the entire curve. So here the, the curve is kind of static and we're just changing the points along the curve. Here the whole curve is going to shift. So it's going to either shift to the right, which would mean an increase in supply. Because if you notice, let's say we take this point at this price. Well, if we shift the curve right, at that same price, we're now going to have an increased quantity supplied. So a shift of the entire curve can also affect that, um, that supply. And then we can also shift it to the left, which is going to decrease the overall supply. And so notice that if we shift the curve, the entire curve right or left, all of the points are getting affected. 
Okay, so we're not keeping the curve static and just looking how we go from one point to the next movement along the curve. That would be change in quantity supplied. The whole curve is going to shift. So we're going to be looking at the change in the range of points. All the points are going to be changing. All right, we're not just going to be looking at single points. And a change in supply, a shifting of the entire curve right or left, that's going to be affected by multiple factors. Okay, it's not just going to be one factor, which is price. It's going to be other factors that we're going to talk about. And there's going to be a bunch of them. So we'll get into more detail on that when we cover that change in supply. So that's what we're going to cover in the next couple of videos. The next video is going to be talking about change in quantity supply in a little bit more detail. And then the video after that, we're going to talk about change in supply.